would come on and do um, another episode of my mom vlog. This time, um, Bethany gave me a great idea. We were talking about um, the difference between Disney and Universal. And we noticed that for us at least, one park, one company was better than another. For us at least, um, depending on your kid. If your kid is a sensory seeker versus a sensory avoider and loves craziness, loudness, then it would be the opposite for you. For Bethany, um, she tends to be a mix sometimes, but there's a lot of avoidance for her. So, while everyone's asleep, um, I figured maybe I'll make a little video here, give some tips, tricks, things that I have done or found that work for us. Maybe it'll help someone else. Um, make a short little video here. So, when we went to Universal the other day, we noticed that Universal versus Disney, um, they tend to, at random times, not during parades, because during parades, Disney does this too, there is music blasting, like regular, everyday, loud music, which it's music that we normally would like, but Bethany was walking around covering her ears for a lot of it and was very stressed about that. So, we found that Universal tended to be way louder, way more chaotic. Um, they don't do as good of a job of crowd control, so even though they may not be as busy sometimes, it can feel way crowded, way more crowded, and um, navigating can be harder. Um, especially like if we have to get on and off elevators with the baby with the stroller, they don't, they have attendance at the elevators, but not in the same respect that at Disney would. So our opinion was that Disney might have been a little bit better. Um, Disney does have louder music during the parades, but their music tends to be more manageable for her. It's not the same kind of music. It's Disney music. It's music that they've created for their parades. It's more kid friendly. It's more, it's not as um, annoying to her. Um, when they do have music throughout the park, it's always Disney music, but it always seems like it's in the background. It's subtle. You, you kind of have to look for it. Um, as far as crowd control, Disney hands down wins. It could be super duper crowded. Yes, walking from ride to ride can be a little insane, but waiting online for rides, um, having to be shuffled through a queue, having to be put onto an elevator is always very well organized. There's never an issue or a fight or people getting um, angry with each other like we've had happen at Universal when we were trying to get on the elevator for Hogwarts Express. Um, totally different to me, hands down, Disney wins. Um, so, and also, I mean, Universal may have something similar. I, I haven't done enough research into it to find it, but for us at Disney, um, there is the disability pass, which gives us the ability on top of our fast passes <clears throat> to, um, pick one ride at a time that we can kind of cut the line where we get to go on the fast pass line. So she's not as overwhelmed waiting in line. Disney also doesn't charge you for the fast passes, so I can get at least three fast passes and know that three rides oh. we're going to get to do for that day if she's getting stressed and can't do the regular lines. Universal, I have to pay an extra cost. That's not going to work. It's very expensive. We've done it. Um, also, this has nothing to do with autism or any of that, just my personal opinion. When I go to Disney, I feel free, fully immersed in their Disney world whatever character it is you're seeing, whatever you're doing, it is done to a T. It is done down to every minute detail. Um, the people who are with the characters know a lot about that character. They, you know, it's, it's all really done well. It's fully immersive, in my opinion. You feel like you're part of all of that. Where I'm a huge um, Harry Potter fan, and I feel like Universal dropped the ball with that stuff. When I go into Harry Potter world, it's great. It's awesome. It's cool stuff. It's cool to look at. It's a little hectic in there. It's crazy. There's no management for any of that. Like you get pushed around. It's you, it's hard to see. There's it's hard to look at things. It's it's pretty crazy. Um, but I don't feel fully immersed in Harry Potter world as much as they've tried to make it a separate area and you go through this cool entrance for the new area. The people who work there don't, in my opinion, embody the whole Harry Potter land 
thing that you would get from characters and different things at Disney. Um, I want those people to be like super into it. Like, you know, you would get at Disney where people who are working with certain character areas know every single thing about those movies, every single thing about the character, what, whatever it may be. Um, you can't, some of those people, you can't stump them. There's no way you could try. I've tried. Um, the, at Harry Potter world, they're just people in costumes. They're just, they're wearing their Harry Potter gear and that's all they are. They're just there to work. Um, the other thing I have found is, um, as far as for Bethany, going back to that, um, when we have issues, we have meltdowns, we have hard times, Disney will go out of their way to help us. Um, Disney employees will go out of their way to see how you're doing, how things are going, even if it's a person waiting, you know, ch pushing people through the queue, talking to the kids, interacting with them. You, we did not see that at all at Universal for our year that we had a pass there. Um, not much interaction with the, the staff. And <laughs> we had a funny story, like um, at Disney, the employees there treat guests, in my opinion, you get treated like gold. That's why I like to go, even though I may not, I may be tired of the whole princess thing. Um, <clears throat> they treat you like gold. And if, when I'm paying that much money, I love it. It's a getaway, it's great. I feel like I'm somewhere away from everything. Um, they will be so polite to you, so kind to you, help you, whatever. At Universal, no way. Um, Disney has a way of speaking to their guests. And, you know, even if it, there isn't a problem, flipping it and making it positive, talking to you in a positive light. Universal doesn't do that. We were on a Jurassic Park ride and someone was wearing a hat, which you're not allowed to do, and they've said everybody with hats take off their hats. And I know at Disney they would have been like, you know, sir, we would like you to take off that hat so you can have a magical day or, you know, some kind of Disney spin on it. Um, they, as we were, our boats going around through the ride, announced, man in the second row, take off your hat as you've been told many times before. Do it now. Like it was, there was no sugarcoating it. There was no nice way of saying it. It was do it. <laughs> it was very, I, I was laughing, but you would never, I mean, it didn't bother me. It didn't bother the guy. But you would never see that happen at Disney. They would not speak to someone like that. Um, and I also love that if we have issues, we've lost items, Disney bends over backwards to fix it. Like, so we've never had an issue where something happens, something breaks, and Bethany's freaking out. And now we're, like, spending money to buy it again. No, we've had things um, taken from our stroller, and they gave us a voucher to get another one. And a fast pass for our trouble of having to walk far to replace it. They, um, someone took the stroller fan off our stroller. We got a voucher for a free one and a fast pass for another ride of their choosing. They let the kids choose it. Like huge, huge things. We've gone, I, I've never had this happen. I've never had calm things. We were in Starbucks getting drinks and the kids were crying about cake pops and Bethany's having a full on meltdown. And I'm like, no, you're not getting cake pops. You don't need them. It's junk. Um, we have other snacks with us, whatever. Full on losing her mind, getting super upset. We haven't even gone on any rides. It's like the beginning of the day. Next thing I know, they are handing them cake pops of their choice saying, it's on Mickey today. These things are huge, huge. I mean, it doesn't happen all the time. Lots of people don't experience that stuff, but. So, um, we just wanna say, you know, our opinion as far as sensory wise, loudness wise, crowd control, ease of the park, Disney hands down wins. Universal fails. And we felt like it failed in every aspect. Um, the kids weren't, well, Bethany wasn't like, let's go back, let's go back, let's go back, like she does with her Disney passes. And we've been to Disney, like, they've memorized the place. Um, I don't think there's a thing we've missed. So, um, th that's kind of interesting that they only had a year at Universal and that's not something she's like, oh my God, let's go, let's go, let's go. I mean, she enjoyed it and when we would say we're going, she was excited, but it wasn't something she went crazy for. So I thought that was interesting. I wanted to share that with everybody. You know, maybe give me some comments, see what your opinions are, how you dealt with Universal versus Disney, which one you thought was better. Um, but maybe this will help someone if you're thinking about which park to try, if your kids are into both. I mean, because they have different things, so you might be into Universal, not Disney. Um, I would say Disney is the way to go if your kid can't deal with loud noises, hectic crowds. I mean, Disney's going to have hectic crowds, but still.
the crowd control is better there. Um, so that's what I got. Um, thanks for listening. Drop me some comments. Subscribe to our channel. Bye.